What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Colors and I'm back with another video and today's video is going to be about the 20 things that I personally wish I would have known before breastfeeding. So if you're interested in hearing what those things are, just keep on watching. So I'm going to just go ahead and jump right into it because I have a feeling in this situation that I might have a lot to say <laughs> when it comes to breastfeeding so we just gonna go ahead and start off with point number one and the first thing and the main thing that i heard a lot about but i guess i didn't really take that serious and that is it hurt now the way that i like to explain it to people when they ask me like oh yeah it hurts you know this and that you get over it no listen Listen, all right, I've kind of underestimated how strong a baby suction is. It is incredible, actually. And because of that, it kind of changes the shape of your nipple and they start sucking on it in time. That hurts. I re even remember taking showers in the beginning and was like, no, this is not worth it. It stings your boobs. Like, that's how much it hurts. Like, I had all kind of bruises, abrasions, welts, all on my nipples. Like, those first two weeks are brutal. I mean, even longer than that, to be honest. The second thing I really wish I would have known is that a baby's suction is more powerful than a pump. So no matter what breast pump you get, your baby will always pull out the most milk than any pump ever could. Now, I, that is something that I wish I would have known because in the beginning, I kind of honestly slacked off on breastfeeding a lot. And when I started to pump more than breastfeeding, I lost a lot of milk because I guess, which I didn't realize that the pump was pulling all the milk out. And what I should have been doing was letting her eat first and then whatever's left pumping that out and that way that I was continuously emptying out my breasts, I didn't realize I wasn't until I went through a lot of turn oil and sometimes I still go through it now. The next thing that I wish I have known about breastfeeding is that good positioning matters. Oh my God. So whether it is with your pillow, your boppy pillow, best friends or other pillows or whatever, no matter what or how you position your baby on your boob, it really does matter because you can really hurt yourself if you're constantly doing improper positions. For example, what I mean is if you're cocking your hand a lot like this all the time, think. You can really mess up your wrist like that, your arm, your back, your shoulders. I have went through a lot of aching phases uh, because of not having good positioning. And I was always really afraid of being in the bed with the baby. And because of that, I honestly sacrificed a lot of portions of my body and how I positioned her in the beginning, which is, I think, a big reason why I kind of slapped off on breastfeeding because I was starting to get in a lot of pain. So. I don't really hear people talk about that, but make sure when you are breastfeeding that you're in proper position, you're not slouching a lot, that you're not like leaning back and you're not really bending your wrists like this a lot just to get positions because I gained a lot of issues that way. But yeah, I, I definitely wish that I would have known that in the beginning and I would have fixed it. The next thing I wish I would have known is that milk can take time coming in. Now, I always did hear, because it did take us two years to get pregnant, so I did hear that it could take time for the milk to come in, but I didn't comprehend like, hey, even though your milk is not in, you still have to breastfeed until it comes in. Like, it's not like, oh, you're not breastfeeding, you're waiting until it's coming in and it just drops in. I guess that's what my mind was. Like, oh, it's gonna pop in and then that's when I'm gonna start breastfeeding. No ma'am, you have to um, keep feeding your nipple to your baby like every two hours and getting her to pull that milk in. That is how that milk starts to generate and come in. And for me, it took my milk five days. Five days to come in. Cause you always hear like, oh my milk came right in or maybe three days later or something like that. So I, I was thinking like, oh before it becomes a real big issue, my milk would be in. But no, that wasn't it for me. So yeah. 
The next thing that I wish I would have known is that you can get milk while you're pregnant. I was really actually personally surprised that my milk actually took so long to come in because I actually started to pump a little bit before I went into labor. So I think it had to be like maybe like two weeks before I started pumping and some milk actually came out. So I just thought that pretty soon after I would definitely um, be able to get milk sooner. So when I didn't get it till five days later, I was pretty surprised. But yeah, going along with that, you can obviously pump while pregnant and get milk while pregnant before your baby ever comes. So yeah. The next thing I wish I would have known is that babies, stomachs are very small and that they don't really need a lot of milk in order to get full so they say you only need or baby only needs only a tablespoon of milk in the beginning so the colostrum is essentially good enough to feed the baby even though like i said a hundred times that my milk didn't come in for a long time the colostrum did hold her over for like a day or two and then after that they was kind of like uh okay we need to start giving her something else so that she can start eating so i obviously started doing donor milk and that kind of helped out in between those times the next thing that i wish i have known and i already did technically know this i talk about this a lot and that is you can drink and breastfeed just time out you know yourself um, accordingly. This is how I think about it and my doctor said that is about right. Usually they say if you take one cup or a drink of alcohol, a glass of alcohol, you usually wait like an hour before that one gets out of your system if you don't drink anymore. I typically wait closer to the hour and a half to two hour mark before I think about breastfeeding or pumping and stuff like that. So you don't have to pump and dump, but yeah, you can live your life. I personally just pumped and then gave her the frozen milk stash that I had in the freezer when I was drinking. So, yeah. And that worked out and she's totally fine. The next thing that I wish I've known in the beginning of breastfeeding is that between the hours of 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, you create the most milk. So that is the best time to breastfeed. That is something I didn't find out until maybe like over a month. And I was like, hmm, well, she is always hungry around that time anyway. So um, in the beginning, I got frustrated really fast and that I was about to go into like postpartum depression and decided to bottle feed in the middle of the night. So we were still waking up that time anyway, but I had decided to start it to breastfeed in, in between those hours. And I seen a tremendous difference in that time frame. I was starting to make eight to 12 ounces at a time. Sometimes three bottles I would fill up at a time. So that is something that I wish I would have known in the beginning so that I would have created a supply a lot faster. The next thing that I wish I have known is that a lot of times when you think of breastfeeding, you think of, I pull out my boob, I breastfeed my baby, and that it is what it is. That's all I have to do. But technically, if you are even breastfeeding mom, you are still needing to pump. Like I was talking about earlier, when it comes to feeding your baby, sometimes your baby doesn't quite empty you out a lot. It is not a must that you need to pump. But if you are definitely worried about milk supply and stuff like that, and or even if you're a person who's going back to work and stuff like that, you really should have a pump. So one thing I didn't, I guess, realize is that even though I'm a breastfeeding mom, I still need to pump. It's not like I don't have or have a need for a pump at all just because I'm a breastfeeding mom. No, you still need a pump too. So to go along with that, because I need a pump too, I technically still need bottles. So because you are breastfeeding, that doesn't mean that you aren't gonna be out at some point or not gonna be with your child. So you need to make sure that your partner or whoever's watching your child has a way to feed your baby. And because of that, too, along with the pump, I didn't realize like, hey, you still need bottles. You still need a pump. You still need all these parts, even though you are a breastfeeding mom. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I knew 
that I would end up pumping anyway, but I didn't know that it was as much of a must in the sense if you are breastfeeding. To me, how I personally look at it is that whether you're breastfeeding or pumping, it kind of like goes hand in hand unless you're not pumping or breastfeeding at all. So I don't know why people, in my opinion, kind of like to differentiate people who only pump or breastfeed. To me, we're all a family and us pumpers and breastfeeding moms are the same and people who don't even breastfeed a pump is kind of like in their own separate because they don't have to deal with the things that we have to deal with. We're all moms at the end of the day, so, but yeah, I didn't realize that those two things I didn't need, so yeah. The next thing that I wish I would have took more seriously in the beginning, and that is buying nipple cream. Oh my God, nipple cream is a lifesaver. Nipple cream is your best friend, your confidant, your everything. I don't know what it was, but like the first three months, I wasn't using no nipple cream at all. Like, what was I doing with like? Your nipples will be saved. And I noticed that when I started to finally use nipple cream, I didn't get as many bruises, well, cracks, all kind of stuff in my nipples when I made sure it's moisturized. Now, I did assume that when you start using nipple cream in the beginning that you wouldn't be in pain at all um, when you use nipple cream as long as your nipples was moisturized and that's not true like your nipples will still hurt it just won't hurt as bad the next thing that i didn't realize when it comes to breastfeeding and this to me this was a huge one for me and that was how much of an emotional toll it can take on you. Now, every mother's different, how they take things differently. It all depends on their lifestyle. It all depends on your circumstances, whether you work or whether you're at home. But in the beginning, in the first couple of days home, oh my God, how overwhelmed I was in breastfeeding. I guess I was used to my routine and whatever that was <laughs> and used to doing things how I was doing it and I don't think I realized how fast two even three hours go by when it comes to breastfeeding and most babies don't go to sleep until 11 12 o'clock because they don't really understand timing so I was going to bed 11 12 o'clock staying up late on top of doing daily stuff for the baby even my own personal day stuff trying to take a shower and all this stuff it was a toll immediately and I really thought it would have hit me a lot later like a couple of months later and no when I tell you like the first couple of days home so after having her for probably a little over a week, I didn't realize how much it just sucked. Like, it just sucks. It's, it's, it's work. It's not as simple as people make it out to be. Whip out your boob and do it. No, just the energy it takes to get out your bed, pick up your child, adjust your child on your boob, when not laying down in the bed with the child, and then laying them back down, then um, making sure they sleep, and then you go to sleep, but doing that every two hours was just a lot. The next thing, I ain't gonna say that I wish I would've known, but that is one of the things that I guess I didn't take serious, is that um, it is legal to breastfeed in public. Like, you absolutely can breastfeed in public. You don't necessarily have to cover up. It is a common courtesy to cover up, but it's not something that you have to do. It is so weird because um, to me in my head and how society trained us to think, it is kind of weird to go in a place to where no matter how you show your body, it, it, it would not be okay if I wasn't feeding my child to pull out my boob. And it is so weird to go get out of that mindset and to just pull out my boob without covering myself up and feeding my child. But it is totally legal and it's a blessing that they did make it legal. I'm not 100% comfortable in just throwing my boob out in front of everyone or I would say strangers. Like I'm more cool with people that I'm cool with, but just as a courtesy, if I can just like cover up or go in another room or something like that, I would just do it because I personally feel better. To each his own, how you plan on doing it personally, depending on who's around me, I'm not gonna do it in front of like my man's homeboys or 
my girlfriend's boyfriends or my dad or for them personally. It's just weird. But you know, I know that there's some people who really absolutely don't care. So <laughs> the next thing that I didn't realize when it comes to breastfeeding is that how long it can take to actually breastfeed. Now, when I say this, really think about this when you actually put your baby to the boob it's not like in 10 15 minutes that baby can be done in the beginning especially that your milk is not like uh dropped like that that baby can be on that boob for 30 40 50 an hour so imagine you gotta feed your baby every two hours but then you start it like an hour ago but it takes an hour to eat and then it just feels like the baby's always eating because it takes them so long to eat like now as they get older it gets a lot faster they uh get a lot more drags of milk out at a time but wow it is a process the next thing i wish i would have known is that babies suckle to soothe themselves so a lot of times breastfeeding babies aren't really as dawn into pacifiers but a lot of time breastfeeding babies just want to be on the boob just to be on the boob because it is just comforting for them it is their saving place and a lot of times which i didn't know either which is a bonus is that you want them to uh just soothe themselves on the boob because the more they're on the boob the more milk you're creating the more supply you're gaining and it's just a bonus for the both of you i personally didn't like that <laughs> i personally didn't want to just be on the boob all the time you know <laughs> i didn't want her just soothing on it you know it was already painful it's just you know it's just not a good time <laughs> I make breastfeeding sound bad, it's really not. But if they want to soothe themselves on it, just go ahead and let them. If you care about your supply, if you care about continuously keeping that up and gaining that high milk out, you want to let them get to the boob as much as they want to. So uh, that is something I wish I would have known. Another thing that I wish I would have known is that a lot of times well, the babies who are breastfeeding cannot, it's almost impossible for them to become overweight because they're drinking at their own pace. They're putting in a lot of work to get that milk out. So they're doing their own little exercises to get milk and to feed themselves. So if you're worried about whether like your baby's always eating on the boob and you're always feeding them and that the baby's gonna get fat and all that stuff, not true. So going along with that, because they can't overeat a lot of times babies who are breastfeeding generally weigh a lot less or they're generally smaller babies and i have noticed this even in my daycare they're just like tiny little things they're gone now they like little 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 small people just running around and stuff like that you're like how dang how old that baby is like <laughs> And it's like, oh, this baby's like six months. And it's like, it's just a little, little, little person. But um, a lot of times they are a little smaller. And the last thing that I wish I would have known about breastfeeding is that it seems like those babies are generally more clingy. And I don't really want to use the word clingy. I would like to say that they seem generally like more attention. And and I use seem as a strong word because a lot of times, because you are a breastfeeding mom, the boob uh, usually soothes them. So they always want to be on the boob. So remember how I mentioned that. But it's just that they want to soothe themselves on you. It's not like they just constantly just want to just be around you to hug you and to always be on you and this and that and they just want you to hug them and you know which babies do want that but they're just comfortable because they're always in that position that's their saving place that's what puts them to sleep that is their end all be all and you're just that provider for them for that but uh, it just comes off to be like a little attached, but no, they just are comfortable and because you decided to be a breastfeeding mom and when you decide that, those are things that come with the territory. So those are the 20 things that I wish I would have known. A lot of things might seem like I'm saying the same thing, but I kind of am, but looking at it in different directions because there's just a lot of things that just don't dawn on you because you haven't been through it before. 
and you don't realize how much of a decision it is to breastfeed and once you start to breastfeeding or decide to withdraw milk from your body it's something that you kind of got to keep up with and it's a process to dry up your milk so uh, these are things you might want to hear it might be helpful if you are in debate as to if, if you want to or you don't want to don't let what I'm saying scare you because it, it it isn't bad but I'm just being honest like I am trying to be straightforward and saying what it is no it's not a negative thing it is a beautiful thing but it is a hard thing to do it's it's hard working um it's not effortless whether no matter what you do whether it's pumping or breastfeeding it is work and i and honestly in my experience i don't think breastfeeding is any easier than pumping or pumping is any easier than breastfeeding i think they both work and you need to decide that what you want to do about the process it's either that you decide to do that or you don't decide to do it at all but it's a it is what it is situation hopefully these videos or what i'm saying is not offensive but if it is so sorry about it but it is what it is so, you know just do what's best for you basically and make your decisions based off of research don't just take my word for everything but hopefully that you got some different type of insight so yeah that is the 20 things that I wish I would have personally known about breastfeeding so I really do appreciate you guys watching this video but that's it <laughs> so just make sure you just like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and join the fam and I will see you guys in the next one all right bye